talk about what that means in terms of not just this idea of community, but community anchored behind something meaningful, something measurable. Um, but I follow this model from Scott Peck, and a table full of people here that community means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, right? Being someone who does a lot of work around culture, um, I, I understand the, the um, where people are centered, right? And so for some, it's uh, communities around faith. For some, it's around family. It may be friends. It may be a feeling of they call me. They, they reach out to me. They feel um, or help me to feel in some way special. Right? They give me something, right? Some people love gifts. Um, or they know when to hug me, you know? And that makes me feel like I'm in community. Um, and so oftentimes, I feel thematically, community to us is how it makes us feel and what we get from it what we can derive from that. And sometimes, for those more altruistic individuals, it's more about what we can give, right? Am I able to contribute some skill or um, some knowledge of some sort that makes me feel important in some way? Um, I want to say at the top that community building, as defined by Peck, is not a, a destination, destination um, but rather a journey. And one of the things that I discovered very early on, especially with students, is that we're very destination oriented. We want to be there, right? We're in a car ride four hours. We don't want to be in the car for four hours. We want to be at our destination already. How many of us can relate to that? <laughs> um, so if someone were to tell you then, okay, I know you want to be there, but it's going to take us about a month or a year to get to that destination. And while we're doing that, by the way, you're gonna learn a lot of really tough things about yourself and others that's gonna really turn you every which way but loose. Um, you know, you might not be inclined to wanna to jump on that bandwagon, huh? And so oftentimes when we begin to introduce this idea of community to our student leaders, you'll see a variety of reactions to it. Um, it feels very, um, as some would say, touchy-feely. Right? Um, I think a word for that might be spiritual for others. Um, because it's a process that involves deeper relationship building with others. Um, and so let's, let's dive into what this community building is. And he looks at, so although it's not formulaic, which means essentially he doesn't believe that this is uh, an exact science or process, but it's generally what communities go through. And so the first stage, if you will, is that pseudo community, community is, is very similar to that. It's fake community, <laughs> right? And we'll talk about what that looks like. The next phase is chaos. Chaos is where a lot of groups stop because we don't like chaos. Just the word chaos makes us probably cringe, right? In order to get to community, we have to go through the third stage, which is emptiness. And emptiness is not, oh, I've got to like be really sad and tell you my deep dark, you know. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then last but not least, authentic or genuine community. Um, you know, there are a variety of things that we just don't share that would probably, and I think they're all sort of linked to something common. What is that specific thing? There's a value you place on it that might not be the same value as the people around the table. So if I start sharing how I feel about something in politics or religion or feelings or family, others might not hold the same thought, opinion, belief, or attitude that I do. And that will cause some problems, right? So really what's behind the pseudo community is protecting my value, my belief, my attitudes, my thoughts, right? I don't want anyone to know what those are. The less you know, the more comfortable it will be, and the more comfortable it will feel chaos. So let's talk about chaos for a moment, right? Chaos is often marked, and if we go to page 90, which is the third page in, our, you guys are front and back, I'm not front and back. So page 90. Chaos always centers around well-intentioned but misguided attempts to heal and convert. Chaos feels very chaotic. It feels very 
Um, like nothing is getting done, unproductive. It feels like we're talking in circles. Um, we, you know, we, we're, we're talking over each other sometimes perhaps. Um, there's a lot of emotions that run high because of obviously my viewpoint is my viewpoint and I need you to get to my viewpoint as quickly as possible. And when you're not, what happens? So this escalation is starting to happen, right? Um, so here we read on 91, individual differences are in pseudo community right out in the open. I'm um, sorry, in the, chaos, in the stage of chaos, individual differences are unlike those in pseudo community right out in the open. Only now, instead of trying to hide or ignore them, the group is attempting to obliterate those differences. Um, there's one thing that I like here that it goes on to say, underlying the attempts to heal and convert is not so much the motive of love as the motive to make everything and everyone normal and the motive to win as the members fight over whose norm might prevail. So if I believe the way to fix this is through Jesus Christ, and that's what everyone should believe, how do you think that's gonna blow over in a group as diverse as we've got? The problem with that oftentimes, when we've never, we've never really been in a group that has a give and take, is we really truly believe and sometimes put a, a, a flag in that belief and say, no, 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 no. Even though I may not say it, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna stew over this because I believe that's the one and only way to fix this issue. And you guys are gonna keep coming back to this issue and I'm just gonna keep saying, I, we could have solved this minutes ago, hours ago, if you guys just would have listened to me, right? And so we're doing this attempt to heal, to convert, to fix other people, fix, right? because we think that's our role. Um, one thing that I'll say about community, and uh, the adults heard this from me, um, why I don't believe in committees, right? So follow me on 93, second paragraph. The problem of the emergence of such secondary leaders is not their emergence, but their proposed solutions. What they are proposing one way or the other is virtually always escape into organization. It is true that organizing is a solution to chaos. Indeed, that is the primary reason for organization, to minimize chaos. The trouble is, however, that organization and community are incompatible. Committees and chair people do not a community make. And there's a reason for that. Community, according to Peck, is egalitarian. There is not a totalitarian state. There's no one leader putting the hammer down and saying this is what we do. Community can be made with um, a rapid pace if community is formed first, right? And one of the issues that we consistently had last year was that we were trying to make these decisions without the relationships being in place. And so therefore people were still buying, trying to fix, heal and convert and stayed in that chaos all year long. And so therefore we never really heard one another and built something together. So chaos is necessary. The way through chaos is not through organization or committees, but rather beginning to listen softly. And that phase is what we would call emptiness. And that, if you want to follow with me, is on page 94. Um, emptiness is a stage uh, marked by um, letting things go that are preventing you from being in authentic in an authentic space with others. So we talked about a little of the, uh, some of these earlier, right? Biases and prejudices, expectations and preconceptions, um, ideology, theology and solutions, the need to heal, convert or fix or solve. Like these things really, or the need to control. That's a big one for a lot of people. Like some people just need to be in control and they have difficulty with being able to let go and say, you know what, that is a really great idea. Let's try that without putting my stamp on it and saying it has to be this first, right? I think Congress has an issue with this, unfortunately, right? They, everyone needs to control something and so nothing really gets done. Um, community is a way for everyone to be heard on the team. Even if my idea is not the one that comes out the gate, I know that in that process, I was heard. And that's why it's important that we understand it's not a destination. Whatever we end up deciding really isn't the, the, the prize here. It's everyone being heard in the process that's the prize. Um, and that's the, the real, um, the, the goal for us uh, as an organization.
Um, and then community. Community is marked by being able to hear each other finally speak. It says soft quietness, uh, a kind of peace. Now, for you, Ezna, I want to read um, a couple of segments, right? So at the bottom of page 103, there will be tears in abundance. Sometimes they will be tears of sadness, sometimes of joy, sometimes simultaneously they will be tears of both. And then something almost singular happens. An extraordinary amount of healing and converting begins to occur now that no one is trying to convert or heal. And community has been born. Um, community isn't just we're now able to speak about those things that we didn't speak about before. But it's about feeling comfortable enough in an environment where you can share authentically what you're thinking and feeling. Right? So I don't just get into a space and say, oh, this happened, this happened, or this is this and this. But it's if I share something, I know I'm going to be heard. I know it's going to be a safe space. And I know that what I'm going to be saying um, will be celebrated in some sort of way. Right? And that's, that's different for each community. So to get through this process, there are three things that are extremely important to have. Um, I call them three key ingredients is saying, I commit to this community. It's saying, I commit to the process. I commit to um, what the process will bring. And I commit to sticking it out. It's a journey that, you know, it's, it's hard to build trust when you just, in the middle of it, decide, I no longer want to be a part of this process. So community building workshops are often tough because we deal with tough um, topics and people realize they made a commitment to stay and they've got to stick it out regardless of how they feel. And so commitment really challenges a lot of people. Consensus is number two. That's the C word I was mentioning to Renoka earlier that a lot of students hate. If you've never seen the movie 12 Angry Men, yes, how do you spell it? C-O-N-S-E-N-U-S. <laughs> 12 Angry Men, I think, and I always uh, give an assignment during the Leadership Academy for students to see that movie because it, it actually really depicts very well the process of consensus making. And not only what it looks like, but how one person can potentially change the direction of the conversation completely um, for the positive, right? And so consensus is different than democracy. Consensus says everyone has a voice. Everyone at the end of the day has agreed on the direction we're going in. Doesn't mean I agree on what was said or what the outcome was, but I agree on the direction we're going. Usually when I mention consensus, I think it's important also to mention that the individual is not as important as the health of the group. So the individual is subordinated under the health of the group. And so I may have some dramatic thoughts or opinions about something, but at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, is that what's good for the, the health of the community? And if it's not, then I have to work through on my, in, on, my, on my own, okay, maybe I subordinate that thought for now. But it doesn't mean I don't speak up. I don't share dissension or um, things that are contrary to what is being said or proposed. Um, everyone's voice matters. And so oftentimes when we are beginning to vote on things, will notice that people have not spoken. And we cannot take a vote on anything until every voice has been heard um, and everyone agrees on the direction that we're moving. And that is often the hardest thing to do, especially when passions run high. <laughs> and the last is vulnerability. And I think that's something that often people are afraid of. Um, vulnerability is vulnerability. It's, it's you know, being um, brave enough to expose things that um, you might not otherwise expose in a, in a group of people. Doesn't mean you're deepest darkest. It does mean this is what I'm feeling and thinking right now. Or I was really hurt by that comment um, and this is why. How oh, that really affected me. Um, can we talk about that? And so it's really training ourselves in vocabulary um, in the moment to deal with issues that are very difficult. Um, I think Renoka can speak to this, um, but one of the most difficult things for me is having the kinds of conversations that I have to have with certain individuals in the organization. They have to happen. They have to happen in the moment. And to train leaders to do that, student leaders to do that, is often difficult. How do you have that conversation with someone about what you just saw or observed? 
and you saw it and observed it, you've got to be the one to go and trust that. Um, that's vulnerability. Years in the past knew was an integrity issue is especially if they saw a volunteer or another fellow student leader um, excluding someone from a group intentionally or not their responsibility was to call them out on that in a loving way right like you are representing the organization why are you excluding individuals from this um, so that was a big no-no that's an example of that and so you you do want to have that conversation like you know did you see that what just happened here um, and even I would do that in the moment sometimes <laughs> We had a code, right, where all I'd have to do is shoot a look, and they knew exactly what that meant. There's someone in the room who's not being included in this conversation, what's going on, you know what I mean? It's very, very important that we're aware of what's happening around us. That's vulnerability. It's being outside of ourselves. That is community making in a nutshell, and there's no reason.